Hi, this is Chuck with Nerd3D. In this tutorial, we're going to go over editing and creating JCMs, or Joint Controlled Morphs, in the LaFemme figure. Now, you should be picking up from a figure that has already got the joints weight maps set up correctly. You don't want to start editing the Joint Controlled Morphs until you already have your weight maps set. The clothing item should contain the Joint control Morphs as copied into the clothing item when you created it in the setup room. Let's see if those are already in this. I'm going to select any of the body parts, and there should be a JCM heading with all of the individual JCMs for that body part. These are the morphs that we'll be editing. It will be easier if you open the scene that you created when you were creating the weight maps for this figure. It will already have the primary keys or the poses that we wanted to target with our weight maps. Remember, these were the poses that also contained JCMs in the target figure. So if we've already got these set up, you won't need to set them up again. If not, you're going to want to pick out the places where the JCMs are at their full strength. Let's start by picking out one of the JCMs and actually editing it. On the right thigh of the figure, we're going to select the right thigh for the clothing item. And then we're going to move out to our first primary key, which is going to be 80 degrees of rotation. That's going to be the JCM R thigh forward 80. The first thing we need to do is tell Poser that we want to edit that morph. Click the little triangle menu next to the morph and click Edit Morph. Now the morph as it's set up in the clothing right now is not in a good state for editing. First of all, each of the individual body parts have separate morphs. You can tell that because there's no double set of numbers here. Let me show you how this looks in the, the target figure. If you look at the right thigh in the target figure and into the JCMs, you'll notice that there's two sets of numbers. That means that all the morphs in the figure for that JCM are linked together. In the conforming clothing, they're actually individual morphs. They're not linked together. Now there's an easy way to link them together before you start editing the morph. With the morph tool open, pick any of the tools. I normally use smooth. Make sure that the bake down for subdivision is checked. Now I'm going to show you something. I'm going to edit this morph with the smooth brush a little bit, and I want you to focus on just one of the vertexes, probably one like this one right here. And as I smooth the brush, you notice that vertex just goes in circles. It goes absolutely crazy. And that is because this morph is already a reverse deformation. In other words, it is a pre-transformation morph. What does that mean to us? Okay, let me select the morph again. I'm going to show you how to fix this situation. Edit Morph. I'm just going to touch it. And you'll notice when I just touch the morph over here, now I have two numbers in this column. That means that the morph is linked together so that we can edit it all in one piece. We can also make changes to this morph all in one piece. If I click the little triangle menu next to the morph, I can convert the morph to post-transform. Post-transform means that the morph is no longer a reverse deformation. And here's a little trick to help you remember pre-transform versus post-transform. Post-transform is what you're going to need for post-work. Pre-transform, the morph is ready for presentation. presentation. We're going to convert it to post-transform. Make sure that all the parts of the morph are selected. And if you only see one part here, it's because you didn't edit the morph just a little bit before trying to make this change. Click OK. Now if I use the smooth brush, you'll see that it does what you expect it to do and actually smooth the morph instead of going insane. And as messed up as this morph looks like it is, it only needs just a little bit of smoothing for it to come back into shape the way you want it. Now you may look at this area right along in here and think that it's very crunchy and messed up. But as it turns out, the base figure actually has a lot of that crunchiness already in it. So we just want to smooth this area just a little bit so that it behaves correctly. Now you may notice that when I smooth this area, a little bit of the details get mushed out of it. So if you have an area that has some details that you're afraid of mushing out with the smooth brush, select the pull brush. Make sure it's set for screen. That means it's going to move parallel to the screen. You're going to set it to a 
a small enough radius to just affect the area that you want to change and turn the magnitude down pretty low so that way it's easy to move without it being too touchy. And then you can just drag the pieces that you want into place. So places that have high detail, you can actually fix them with great detail by using this brush. This works just like the move brush in ZBrush if you're familiar with ZBrush. Now as I continue to smooth this, I've actually noticed some areas that I've created some poke through by adjusting the morph. So let's look at how we can fix that. The easiest way to fix this is probably going to be use the pull brush, and instead of setting it for screen, we're going to set it for surface. We're also going to uncheck the average normals. Now the reason we want average normals unchecked is because we want the normals that are up here in the hip area to move outward. And at the same time, you want the normals that are in the thigh area to move upward. If this was checked, it would take the average of all of those normals, and that would be the direction it moves. That's not what we want in this case. We want to actually smush that together to cover up that poke through. So I'm just going to squeeze that area back closed. You may find yourself going back and forth between the smooth brush and the pull brush to get the exact look you're after. Now you'll remember that when we were creating the weight maps, we were trying not to be artistic. We were trying to just match the base shape of the figure. But now that we're doing the JCMs, we can actually get artistic in this. So I'm going to fix this part in the back that we deliberately didn't fix when we were doing the weight maps. So I'm going to make myself a nice big brush. I'm using the pull brush, and I've got it set to screen, so it works kind of like the move brush. And now I can use this brush to straighten out that belt line on the back that was getting pulled out of shape. And as you notice, I'm getting a little bit of poke through while I'm doing that. It's okay, because with the JCM, we can easily fix that. If I switch to the Titan Fit Brush, make sure I've got the target figure picked out and a relatively small number set in the poke through margin, I can simply go back over that area and fix that poke through with just a little swipe of the brush. While we're here, let's do some things to the JCM to make it fit even better than the weight map could in the first place. We can edit this area on the back of the thigh to make it fit even tighter than was possible with the weight maps. You'll want to check how the JCM works throughout the range of motion for that JCM, in this case from 0 to 80 degrees of rotation. You're likely to find places that aren't working correctly. Now this JCM isn't totally finalized yet, so we're just looking for places that have big poke throughs. We're going to look at this a little bit more detailed later on. In this case, there's a little bit of poke through with a hip and thigh come together. It's kind of an expected spot to have trouble. You can fix a poke through like this using the pull brush like we've done in other places. Just set it to surface relative mode and you'll be able to pull that spot out. Once you've got the JCM set the way you want it, you need to go back to the pose that it was in when you converted it from a reverse deform, that is pre-transformation, into a post-transform for post-work editing. So I've got it back to the minus 80 degrees rotation that was the original pose. You're starting to see why we set these keys. You actually really need them quite a bit. I'm going to go back to the morph, and now I'm going to select pre-transform from the morph's context menu. That's going to switch it back to a reverse deformation like it originally was. Make sure all the body parts are selected and click OK. Now this next bit is optional or can be saved for later on at the end of your morph editing process. What we're going to do is remove this extra dial here at the top. All you have to do is click Delete Morph click select none. Be very careful here because this step is not undoable. So you might want to save before you do any of this extra body part morph deleting. I'm going to go into the body of the figure and just select the body. Now it happens that this JCM is for the right thigh and you'll notice it now has a left thigh. During the process of editing, I accidentally got my morph brush a little over onto the left side of the figure, and this probably shouldn't be here. But you'll want to make sure that it really doesn't affect anything before you actually delete it. In this case, I know it really needs to go away. Click OK. You'll notice that the extra set of numbers above the morph has now disappeared. This is back to behaving like a conformed JCM should. Now let's take a look at another morph to just kind of review this process and to see how they interact. We're going to move to the thigh 
rotated to 120 or limits morph. And that one's actually down here at the bottom of the list. And I'm just going to move it up here so I can keep track of the ones I've done. Now, I need to edit the morph. Then actually edit it just a little bit so that I get my extra dials up here. Convert to post-transform. Convert the whole thing. And then smooth out the rough spots in the morph. You don't need to worry about smoothing out the parts that are deeply hidden inside the bend here because they're never going to show anyway. Just like I did with the thigh bend 80 morph, I'm going to go ahead and straighten out this belt line area also. And also, just like with the 80 degree rotation, I'm going to smooth the area on the bottom of the thigh and buttock to make sure that they fit as well as possible. And finally, I'm going to check it through its range of rotation to make sure that I don't have any poke throughs popping up as this moves from the 80 degree rotation to the limits of rotation. Finally, I'm going to put it back to its original rotation and I'm going to bake it back to reverse deformation. The LaFemme figure also contains a JCM that's a compound. It only applies when the thigh is rotated all the way to the side and all the way forward. And it may look like this morph is going to be difficult to edit, but it doesn't actually need any special treatment. Just make sure that you've already edited the thigh side to side and thigh bend morphs before you start editing this morph. Other than that, it's edited exactly the same. You'll first select the morph for editing. Make sure that its parts are linked. Convert it to a post-transform morph for editing and then smooth it out or whatever needs to be done to make it work correctly. Now you'll notice that there's an area here that has a very bad poke through and I'm going to show you how to fix that fairly easily with the morph brush. First I'm going to smooth out any crinkling that was, that was caused by the transfer of the morph. Another thing to keep in mind when editing this morph, especially this particular morph, is this is actually well outside the range of real human motion. If a person actually bent in this position, they would have a broken hip. Nonetheless, we need to be able to match it fairly well to the underlying figure. And once I've smoothed this off a little bit, I'm just going to use the Titan Fit Brush, make sure I've got my target figure selected and a reasonable distance selected, and I'm just going to use that to make sure I'm not getting any poke throughs in the final pose. When you're working with this morph, as with any of the other morphs, you'll want to test it through its full range of rotation. Now it just happens that this compound morph is a little hard to use our keyframes for, so we need to actually do it in the figure. So I'm going to select the LaFemme figure, go to her right thigh, and spin the bend dial. Now as I twist this dial, it looks like something terrible has happened. But this is because I have not yet converted this morph back to a pre-transform type morph or a reverse deformation. This is an easy mistake to make. If I convert this morph back and then test it, you'll notice that it's going to work a lot better. So I'll select the, the yoga pants, go back to my thigh bend side morph, make sure that I'm in the pose where I converted it, which I am, convert it to pre-transform. Now when I go back to the figure and twist the thigh, or bend the thigh, excuse me, that giant poke through is no longer there. So you want to make sure you're not fixing something that's showing up just because the morph hasn't been converted back to a reverse deformation yet. Once I'm done, I can go ahead and delete all of these extra body dials that I've created along the way. Once again, that's not necessary. It just makes the figure look a little bit better when it's finished. That's about all there is to editing JCMs on any figure and especially on the LaFemme figure. Thanks for watching and have fun using Poser.